Got it. Okay, guys, welcome to the team meeting. We've got some awesome stuff to mastermind around and discuss today. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen that piece of paper in your lap. Don't let it distract you for the next 15 minutes because we're going to dive deep into there, okay? So make sure everyone's got a piece of paper like that with a sticky note on it. Um, so let's start out this team meeting here with a special note from our assistant team leader, Deborah Bell. Deborah, why don't you share with us a little bit about what October is? Love to see you. And yes, yeah, she's very dressed up. Look at her. Hey, we're not missing her. To speak, my comfort comes from being prepared. So. <laughs> I love it. Here, so the camera oh. can see you. Yeah. There we Hi go. guys, stand here and speak. Very young. All you. right, so it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, as many of you know. And for those of you that don't know, I did experience breast cancer just a few years ago, and it was—I don't want to say it was scary, but it was scary at times. Um, I took a positive attitude, and I decided that I was kicking cancer to the curb and making it my dance floor. And I had a team of supporters here in all of you, and I'm forever grateful. Um, a couple statistics that I wanted to share is that not only women could get breast cancer, men can also get breast cancer. And in 2019, the year I was diagnosed after a year and a half prior of a completely clean mammogram, um, that year alone, there were about 500 men that were diagnosed with breast cancer throughout the US, which is really kind of surprising. At the time in 2019, they showed one in three women would be diagnosed with breast cancer. They now show one in eight. So that's um, a little improvement, which is kind of nice. But early detection is so important because there are, I believe they said, the statistics showing over 41,000 women died of breast cancer in 2019. So I was one of the more fortunate. I initially had a stage zero diagnosis diagnosis non-invasive it then on the second a biopsy showed a stage one non-invasive so i did have chemo for 12 weeks i did have um, another infusion that lasted um, nine more months um, but i had a team of office people that were supporting and i want to leave this book at the back my friend cindy our mca had created this book this was a ray of sunshine when these texts would come to my this little mannequin became Deborah Bell. Because Deborah Bell wasn't in the office every day, they brought me into the office. So I will leave as many people lined up to get their picture taken with me. And this was just so much fun. And it really brought a smile on my face every day um, when I was unable to be here. So I just encourage you, um, ladies and um, your significant others, make sure that they know, get your mammograms because it is important in early detection for safety. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your journey, um, I know it's not easy. Many of us have been, you know, touched or know someone of, or, you know, mothers, sisters, wives, many, many of us, unfortunately with that statistic have, have been, um, exposed to this, and I think it's really important that we bring it to the forefront in the month of October and do everything that we can to help support our loved ones and and to share the stories, the success stories of of wonderful survivors that come out the other end. I I gotta say, there's no one more positive than Deborah. <laughs> so um, I you know with a goodwill like that, it's great to see you through. It's awesome. Okay. Um, moving into our mission moment, I think that kicked it off a little bit. Does anyone have any bucket fills today? Couple. Shout out to uh, Deborah for standing in front of everybody. Yeah, right? yeah. Sharing that, your uh, that that intense journey mm -hmm. in like sixty seconds. But yeah. you know, uh, thank you. And should anyone be given the same diagnosis or someone you know? I'm here to be the ear and the shoulder. So please yeah. have the reach out. And, and shout out to Holly. Yay! Thank you. I want to give a shout out to you guys that came last night. I think it was awesome. Uh, we had the state installation dinner uh, for the Women's Council of Realtors. <laughs> 
California, and I was officially installed as the district vice president for district three. So I help run and manage everything from uh, Ventura down to San Diego. <laughs> so all the, all the networks. So um, yeah, so I'm really excited to be able to help in this way. And uh, we've got South Face people. Um, but you got it was so wonderful to have Ankel Wilkes family there. Thank you so much, of course, for letting me in the office to fully support the advancement of business and you know business leaders, particularly those of the female kind. So I appreciate it. We had a good time dancing, yeah. drinking, eating. Okay. You had to get up early to get that slide together, girl. Oh, <laughs> to be fair, Kim made it. Oh, he definitely, <clears throat> he definitely stand tall in, you know, among the, the crowd. Yeah. Uh, literally, <laughs> top left picture. But it, it was such an awesome event. And uh, uh, I I didn't remember it's actually a state level event until I showed up. I thought it was like a local Long Beach Women's Council. So it was great to see a lot of the top, top leadership, um, some of them nationwide in our community of, real, of uh, realtors. So uh, it's pretty awesome that you're involved and you kind of, you know, it, it, was, it, it, it takes a lot to, you know, want to do it and be involved. Uh, and you're ambassador of mm -hmm. also not just the company, but also this office. So that's pretty awesome. So feel free to guys to connect to understand like, more what it is and <clears throat> I can be involved directly or indirectly. Yeah. And Women's Council is a conduit to be able to get a seat at the table. So you know all those funky MLS rules that are made or any of these things that affect our realtors on a daily basis, those are created by people in Women's Council and CAR and NAR and go downward. So when you get involved and you step up in leadership, you get the opportunity to express your opinion and to be able to help you know, be the voice of your fellow realtors and your community to say, this isn't what, what's working or we need to have this in place. This clear cooperation rule isn't clear, <laughs> you know, clear is a, is a relative term, but uh, regardless, it, it, you know, when we sit back and we let things happen to us, as I'm sure a lot of people could say, it's a lot different than taking the proactive step to make sure that the right things happen to us, right? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Anyone else? Bucket bills? I have one. I have another one. So it's kind of hard to see with this little Zoom background. But y'all, if you guys haven't talked to Lenny, we want to send him a big KW virtual hug today. So um, Lenny, of course, it has, it's his Achilles. Yes. Yes, his Achilles. Injured his Achilles playing soccer in the KW soccer event and has been out for several months. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm sure you guys haven't seen him coming and going from his office or cold calling the way he normally is. So we want to send a big virtual hug to Lenny if he's on there, if not watching this recording. Um, Deborah, do you want to just uh, share a little bit there? If perfect. So I just to say this, but, but one thing, just for the record, uh, I get injured the week before Lenny, so I had nothing to do with this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're but walking. Usually the oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> like pickleball with me. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of run so long. <laughs> okay, so because it was a little soccer injury, I decided to go out and buy a soccer ball, write a pen, and I'd love for everyone to sign this so we can send this off to Lenny and let him know that we do miss him. So yeah, get it started. And I, of course, I chose pink because we're giving it to me. Yes. <laughs> so write your, your uh, good well wishes on there for Lenny, please. Anyone else? No? OK, great. Let's recognize our top producers for the month. Uh, congratulations to our top listing agent this month, Brandy Adair. And our top buyer's agent, Julia DeVere. Congratulations. Our top buyers team, the default group. Our top buyers group, the David Green team. And Linda Green here. They're having a great year. Top listing group, Van Wig and Associates. Good job, Sophia, on the little gifts. Those are adorable. 
<laughs> Congratulations to our rising star, Shantae Hightower. Shantae, this is her first trip back to the program. Very exciting. And then congratulations to our mentee graduate, Jeremy Hager. Jeremy has done it. Moving on, he's done his three transactions. He's done his time. <laughs> and he already closed another one. And he already closed another one. So he's done his time and then some, right? So congratulations. He said, I'm your hipster. Let's say I love that. Um, shout out to all of our September top producers. You see our top sales volume, our top units closed, highest sales price, and of course our rising stars. So shout out to all the September. <laughs> Same thing. Congratulations on all your closing. These are the 2022 September closings we had. The list is growing, so that's good signs showing that the market we're still having opportunities for transactions. So. Congrats if you guys have closing in September. Yay for the group. So Anne Marie's not here, but congratulations, Anne Marie on Cafe. And the Emil team, Carlos and Ileana. Congratulations. Okay, I'd like to welcome our newcomers. So we had uh, three newcomers so far since last week. Um, you have Stelios, many Stelios is a commercial agent. Yes, yes. welcome. Yeah, he's, a, he's a commercial agent, uh, years to business. Um, just join our, our team. Also, thank you to uh, Jason, to Paul, for not here, uh, for helping to attract more commercial people. Um, I think at some point he's gonna start using the office Stelios and, uh, uh, produced from here, so uh, just great to have you know, yeah, in part of the, the office. No, that's awesome. We have Johanna too. Welcome, Johanna. I hope she's here. Um, and then we do have Stacy. Stacy, you're here. Hi, what are you standing up, Stacy? Hi, hi, say hi to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, let's see, I've been wanting to get my real estate license for years now over 10 years i finally did it so i'm super excited um got a lot of these <laughs> in our office and i'm excited to join this powerhouse oh yes. we're happy to have you i love it when you do research there you go <laughs> that's good shows good stuff there Okay, great. You guys, this is this week. Don't forget, if you are not already registered, I think there still might be time, but I believe it has to be before the end of the day today for the CAR Expo. Um, we've got at least 20 people that I know of right now that are going. So let us know you're going. Wrong slide. Um, by filling out this Google form, if you haven't already, scan this QR code, look to the email that Sophia is letting out. Um, we're getting groups together and getting meeting things together so we can help save each other's seats and do some fun stuff in the meantime. So make sure you scan that QR code and let us know you're coming, which days you're coming, what sessions you're excited for so we can help make your experience 100% amazing. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, let's take a moment to have Janet come up and give us a couple words about, um, she did just attend the KW Luxury Symposium. So Janet, if you've got a couple things you'd like to share with us. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna be fun. Um, it was expensive. Um, as you would expect something luxury to be. Um, but they made sure that we felt the luxuriousness of it. We were staying in a very nice hotel. Uh, we ate very nice meals. Um, they gifted us with nice little trinkets and things. There were strawberries in our room. Then the next wow. night there were chocolates. <laughs> so it was again, it was very luxurious. So they were really trying to, you know, portray what luxury is all about and give us nice little unexpected surprises. The event itself consisted of um, the first evening, which was the Friday evening, which uh, was uh, just a very nice um, event in the hotel, um, meet and greet type of thing with uh, lots and lots of good food. They fed us well. 
Um, and when I wasn't eating at the conference, I was going to legal seafood and just eating cupcakes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a new addiction. I'm going to have to fly back and forth to Boston for um, And then let's see. Uh, then they had a full day worth of speakers. It was kind of, I thought it was interesting because they didn't have real estate speakers. They had speakers from very different industries that were performing at a high luxurious level. So they had an architect in, kind of talking about what the trends were in architecture. Mm -hmm. They had, um, they had uh, people from the travel industry in, talking about, you know, what they were finding. They had branding experts in. So it was just an interesting mix. And I really was thinking, I don't know if this is going to be good. And it was really great. It was kind of good to get some of this outside information. Um, and I think that it would be really cool if we kind of do a mini version of that um, for the office, maybe going in you know, meeting with an architect and talking about what like the, the trends are for luxury properties. Um, going to uh, a, an appliance store where they sell luxury things, yeah. finding out why this faucet costs 15 times more than this faucet, you know, things like that. Find out what makes products and things that go into homes luxury so that when we're presenting a home to a client, we know what we're talking about. <laughs> um, so anyhow, that's something that I'm hoping to bring to you guys. Um, it was a great event. Uh, to become a luxury agent, it just takes selling three luxury properties, buyer or seller, and then you earn in as an agent, you can utilize all the things. You can still utilize quite a bit of, you know, the luxury marketing, the Keller Williams Network. We sell a hell of a lot more luxury um, homes than Sotheby's does. So we need to make sure that people know that, you know, we can sell these homes and you don't just go to that name because we can actually offer more. We've got a bigger network mm -hmm. than they do. So anyhow, if you want to find out more about it, just talk to me and Kevin. Did they bring up um, <coughs> staging? <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> <laughs> Golly, I haven't talked yet today. Um, <laughs> I remember my first time. Yeah, right? <laughs> Wow. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, so I, we're getting a lot of calls. Let's say if you have to stage a luxury house and it's going to be $10,000, yeah. if it doesn't sell, do you put a deed of trust against the house? Do you have an agreement with the seller? Did they bring that up at all? They didn't really go into okay. those kind of nuts and bolts, but I think that's really good. Staging um, they, is kind of an interesting thing. They did a survey at the end <laughs> and were asking for ideas for future things and uh -huh. topics that we, we should cover. And I think that makes a lot of sense. So I'm in shopping, and I go buy something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> $10. Pay to be there we pairs. Go. There we go. We're going to start making that rule. <laughs> for the luxury homes, because if it's, you know, here, you sell, sell 1.5, that's not necessarily luxury. Correct. That's just track up. Correct. Um, it, it goes county by county. <laughs> um, so I, I believe right now 1.8 for LA County and 2.0 for Orange County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's set by the threshold. So what they do is they take the top 10% of the total um, transactions in that price point. So they go, okay, great. The highest home was 10 million. The lowest home was 500,000. They take the top 10% group. Okay. And they ended at the bottom of that top ten percent, so it, it should fluctuate even year to year. Two thousand in Oklahoma, you know, something. Like yeah, that. it should right. fluctuate I mean, year to year. You know, different. Yeah. Good, <laughs> interesting. It was a really good networking with that, and so um, happy to talk to you guys more about it. Awesome. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. I look forward to what we're going to create together. It's going to be fun. Okay, let's bring up our leadership team. Many, Deborah, Cindy. Hey, pink lady, you're first. Speaking of pink, so Sunday, I don't know if some of you saw my story, but I was out on um, what do they call the dragon boats, where you have two um, rowers um, on the boat. And it was uh, the Soviet Chamber Board Retreat. I sit on the board and the secretary this year, and that was our retreat. And it was really fun that I thought, hmm, if anybody's interested here, maybe we can get a group together and try that after we do take a walk. <laughs> Pick them all the next in play. But um, just want to let people know this Friday is National Dessert Day. 
So we're encouraging you to bring some desserts in and share with the others. So um, make certain that you uh, pop by. And then Friday evening is our bowling event, which I'm sure you probably have a flyer in there to remind mm -hmm. people. Um, but it is over at Calvo. And if you haven't already signed up, please do so, so we can plan accordingly. But we're excited to have you. And then um, check the calendar out because we are adding things. Um, I know we now have um, uh, Shannon's class is back on the calendar. It's gonna be the beginning of November. I think it's that Thursday. Um, Drake is doing a Saturday open house and it's here in the bullpen. I believe it's the 22nd, 22nd at 10, did we say nine, nine or 10? Nine so, to 11. Okay, there you go. Um, but do please come support him. We wanna have Saturday classes so that we can support um, those that aren't able to get here during the week. Uh, the you know more the attendance and the interest we want to make certain we bring back for you so That's definitely great. come in for that do you want to bring up this guy <laughs> oh yes okay so our out. annual food drive um every year we do a food drive uh right around thanksgiving holiday we're picking it up um, in a little bit earlier this year so i do have bags available uh we have a template where you will be able to take that template and you will um, personalize it to you. We want to make certain that you are putting on there the date that you are going to be back to pick up those canned goods and a time frame. So maybe it's going to be Sunday, November 10th, between two and four. I will swing by. Please put it on your porch. And believe me, you will, it's so warming to see how many people actually will fill those bags and have them out there for you. So it's a great opportunity when you get those bags. And you can bring them back anytime. We're going to load them over in the um, bullpen there below the uh, rising stars. And um, we'll collect them. And then we have in the past given to Interval House, which is right across the parking lot. They are a nonprofit that support women who um, basically have left their home uh, because of um, abuse. Uh, and uh, they're always looking for donations over there. So uh, they leave with pretty much a well. Anyway, yeah. It's a great door knocking piece. Yes, okay. it's excellent. You can just drop the bags actually, um, but you're getting your name out there and uh, it's it's a, for a good cause, so. Great, thanks Deborah. Yeah. Benny. Cindy. Oh, okay. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to share some numbers uh, that KW Cares uh, did this last uh, week on our growth talk. Um, We've collected $2.85 million in donations for Florida. That's mm. amazing. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, we've given $1.15 million in grant emergencies to 322 families. Um, we've passed out 100, or I'm sorry, 1,492 generators. And once one family is done with it, when their power comes on, they pay it forward, they give it to another family. Um, our KW vendors have worked on 60 homes and invested $250,000. Um, none of our agents have lost lives in our KW family. Oh, yeah. it was. Um, one of our mega agent offices was destroyed. So they're working yeah. and looking for a new location. Um, it's just amazing. Last week we talked about this and how many checks I've gotten already and on your opportunities, um, the additional dollars that are coming in. And it really touches my heart. And so thank you. And so I really wanted to share what's happening with that money. Um, some of the um, agents there have not only lost their homes, but their place of business is has been destroyed. And so just think about that for us. I mean, how fortunate we are that we have an office roof over our head, we have a home over our head. What if you had neither. So think about your KW family members and add an extra dollar to your opportunity or write a check. Thank you for sharing, Cindy. Holly, may I go? May oh, I go next? Because I yes, got to okay. yes. I'm sorry, Minnie. Oh. <laughs> just real quick. Uh, no, no broker updates. Uh, just a couple reminders. Uh, this afternoon, <clears throat> uh, we have our real estate contract class at two, two to two p.m. to uh, three p.m staging preparing the uh, home the uh, do's and don'ts when it comes to uh, staging and also everyone is invited uh, this friday 
here at the uh, South Bay office, Breaking the Rules of Real Estate Investing with Christy. Uh, she'll be here. It will not be on Zoom. So if anyone uh, would love to uh, participate and understand the ins and outs of real estate investing, uh, she will be here at the uh, South Bay office from um, 12, 12 to 1 30 uh, p.m. And lunch also will be provided. That's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Simon. Simon. Thanks, Simon. And it's called my line. Uh, so I'll be brief because we have a workshop and she's yep. on, the, on the call for the last whatever <laughs> minutes. Uh, that's that, that's that. And uh, Christy, she's also a KW agent, uh, dual states, and she's here in California because she lives in Florida. So she's run away from the storm to be with us, from the storm to the uh, earthquakes, maybe. Uh, so, but she's here. She's awesome. She has a, a pretty amazing class. Feel free to join us because and bring your dessert with you to South Bay. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, we'll do that. The second thing um, is what is the uh, yeah. Pickle, bowling yeah. or pickleball? Uh, bowling. No, the pickleball. Oh, pickleball. I yeah. don't have it on the calendar. No, not yet? No. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your announcement next time. Okay, thank you for your Okay. Bye. Good night, Jeff. Thank you. 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 Thank so moving on here. Okay, great. So it's the second meeting of the month. This is the meeting that we always have a team mastermind. I appreciate you guys that are giving us feedback about topics and things that we can grow our business with and help our clients with. This one actually came from uh, Michelle Harding, who's on the call as well. So <clears throat> let's get down to brass tacks here. So let me move this stuff just in case you guys cannot see my slide. All of you guys have a piece of paper in front of you, right? You guys all have an article in front of you. <clears throat> okay, cool. So. Does anyone, has anyone ever read fake news, bad news, scrolled on social media, seen something that you're like, hmm, is this really factual, right? Everyone has. Let me tell you, your clients have as well. So this notification came off to any Apple user that subscribes to Apple News, which by proxy, spoiler alert, if you're an Apple user, you're subscribed to Apple News. This article was just released uh, uh, last week, right? So Michelle sent us this article, and I am subscribed from that stuff because I know how it affects me personally, and I want to be able to consume my news from a reputable source. But this was sent out to any Apple user that subscribes to this news. So let me just read the title to you guys. Real estate agents are ripping off home buyers. Love that one. If you read through the rest of the article, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to point out a couple of key points to you. So this uh, this guy that wrote this article, telling at it from the perspective of himself being a home buyer, and his agent upon the one year house anniversary gives him a call in a sing songy voice to say, "Welcome, happy anniversary." So excited that you are my client. I'm sending you a gift in the mail. Okay, right? just to give it a little precursor. Um, so walking through the commission breakdown with this guy, here's some of the points that he writes in here. And tell me if you think this is true. There is ample evidence that America's housing market is more or less designed to rip off consumers. Okay, that's a good one, right? Further in the article, he says Americans pay far more than real estate agents and home buyers in most other developed nations, robbing them of a significant portion of what's often the biggest investment of their lives. If American paid the same rate as the British, they would save more than $72 billion a year in real estate commissions. Okay. On the sale of a million dollar home at 6%, the question you have to ask is, did the buyer and seller re receive $60,000 worth of service? Your agent is not your friend. Okay. The question is, how much are the services worth that your agent's providing you? So anyways, um, you guys, we can go on and on. He provides some solutions. I just did a quick Google search and probably got half a dozen of these or more that are now popping up on the internet. Why you shouldn't hire a real estate agent. Why sell your home yourself? How to negotiate your commission with a real estate agent with buying a home. So <clears throat> here's the thing. 
we know when we're feeling the pressure of a shift, we know when we're feeling our household income start to decline, cost of living start to raise, that it brings our stress levels up, correct? Same thing with your clients. They're gonna start looking for every penny that they can pinch. And I believe going through this shift, we are gonna to have to value our services more than ever. Why? People are gonna ask you for discounts. People are gonna ask for that 1% listings. These brokerages that are going through that are offering flat fees just to list on the MLS, which the guy talks about in the article, right? The MLS being the mafia, I think I highlighted that one, which is interesting. I didn't know we were part of the mafia, but you know. Um, but, but all of these things are gonna be things that your clients are looking at, okay? Going into a skills-based market, we need to know what to say to them when they bring these things up. Has anyone ever had or sat with a client that says, oh, did you read this article? Has everyone sat, has anyone sat with a client that said that? Did you read blank article? Did you see the article in the New York Times? Did you see the blank on Facebook? As if it's all the same for everyone, but you know, anyone understands algorithms, so that's not true. Um, okay, so we need to start having a good conversation about this. So let's get into a team discussion here. All of you guys on your pieces of paper have a little colored sticky note. Since we have more people on Zoom than we do in person, we're gonna um, break this down a little bit further. So depending on the color of your sticky note that you guys have, I want you to separate into groups. So let's do, we've got three groups here, not four. Yep, so everyone holds their piece of paper. Great, perfect. So let's have pink group back here. Let's have blue group up here. And Cindy, what color are you? Blue. You're blue, many blue. Okay, cool. Why do you guys yellow? Yeah, there you go. And then yellow up here. Great. So I want you guys to split into groups. <coughs> Once you're in the group, perfect. Susie's exactly ready on the one of the groups. So in our group discussion, here's the question I want you to talk about. Okay. Here's the question I want you to talk about. What's the best thing to say? to a client or lead who asks for a portion or a discounted part of your commission. Okay, I want you guys to share your own personal experiences. We're seasoned agents, what do you say to them? What's some of the words? I want someone to be a scribe that will come up and be a speaker to share what your group discussed. Okay, so why don't you guys move over there a little bit? Go ahead, we'll take. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six what do you guys say to a client who asks for you to discount your commission? Or the person who can afford it. 
So I was in my job on your own And it makes sense to get the deal twice a month, etc., etc. But it comes down to this. Let an attorney do this, right? Yeah, why did I hire you? You get to have an attorney. 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 No, I mean, I'm going to have to go down the street and buy a uh, $2 shirt. Show me one attorney that's going to work for you. Okay, that's going to retain you. That's going to retain you. Why do I know the first one is $50 in a shirt? It's a quality. I don't want you to go to the court shirt. I think I can do this. So you can put me somewhere and say, there's 70 buyers, right? So it's not a good thing. 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 Product, need to brand, First of all, right? uh, the those commission those doesn't want to me. I work here for three decades until it was escrowed. Set of things, not finished, not finished. So I have nothing follow to look about my organization. So now if there's a conversation, then then you can say, you know, we'll take it to a place where Harry now, like you mentioned, I'm not a discount. Maybe we just run the first. I think they're really trying to do it. Because then you're going to have to do like a recent relationship that you probably don't want to have for a recent. So what's the point? So you know what? I'm actually going to have to do it. I think you missed out on it. Maybe you might do it. I'd like to run that. It's a decent page. But you pay what you pay. Right? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, a couple minutes left. Make sure you designate someone to share your discussion with the group. Kim, did you drop the article in the chat? Thank you. I did. Thank you. Everyone, and, you should have the article in the chat. And Hallie, you have some uh, some good comments in the chat oh, as well. Good. Okay, good. Let me go back to get something where we can negotiate with guys like this is what it's offering. You, you don't, no, don't go through the negotiation process. It's like, I mean, you know, part of it. And you know, it's, some you, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you would know uh, how it feels to be uh, like owning your bus. And then and then I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to her and she said and she gonna give me the reason why she wanna hire me. I said, okay, so it sounds like you need someone like me to work for, right? Well, so do you want me to work for free and do all of that? And again, I'm going to remind you that you have not going to worry about any of the my compensation desire because you're not getting it. Yeah. So the seller, the seller is okay. compensated, right? And that's what I'm going to be reminded. Oh, right? do whatever I need to do to make sure that you're going to have the best uh, experience and you're going to get. What you need and what you want. Yeah. <laughs> if I have a conversation, I have you know, if they ask about something, I have the question. Okay, great. All right. It's fine. Actually, I'm going to say, let's say they want the discount. Some people ask me. Like, let's see, find out what their profession is. Like, would you want to get the discount? Yeah. So, like, let's see, it's a car sale. Go up to it and feel like they came in and they said, Hey guys, I love this good discussion. I no, love it. No, we didn't finish yet. No, no, no. It is your last supper. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. What are you doing? This is awesome. This is great. Okay, everyone. Let's have a new discussion about this. Thank you, guys. This was great. I walked around to all the groups and heard some really interesting perspectives, especially from all of your experiences being different from brand new to seasoned. Um, and this again, this is the topic of our discussion because why we don't want to practice this on our clients, right? We want to practice it with each other and mastermind around some of those things. So real quick before we start, I want to uh, make a couple, read this that Michelle had typed in here, Michelle. So uh, just to be clear, this was in Apple News, but it was linked from an article originally on Business Insider, right? So this is a fairly large, you know, company and news source. Um, you know, it's, it's not very, you know, trusted resource full of non-facts, I know. Um, with our clients reading stuff like this, we just want to be armed to resp with re a response to them. We want to be aware that there is a perspective like this circulating around currently and make sure we have a strong stance on our value. Um, so I think those were great points. Thank you, Michelle, for, for typing those out. Perfect. Who wants to go first? Why don't you guys have uh, the blue group? Blue who's, who's going first? Yay. Randy. Yay. Yay. Randy, come on up here, Randy. Here are some of the things that you guys discussed around, some of the things that were shared, said, tactics, scripts, et cetera. Okay, so the overall theme was basically, we're not discount agents and everybody agreed that we're saying, no, we're not doing this. Yeah. Um, the services, you're paying for a service um, and our experience and you wouldn't negotiate an attorney with their billing rate hourly. So you shouldn't expect another professional on the same level uh, to do the same. Yep. Uh, it's different. The the conversations are different with buyers than they are for sellers. Um, the commission belongs to the broker. So if you ever wanted to get out of the uncomfortable situation, we would just have to say, you know what, if you can call my broker, this is actually their decision. And then we agreed nobody's going to call Simon. And if you <laughs> 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 
Um, and then just basically educate them. Educate them on, you know, why it's worth paying the fee mm -hmm. um, for them to have the representation. We have legal uh, risk management behind us. There's a lot of things that we have to pay for, liability, insurance, things that go into it that it's going to be taken out of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. You guys, thank you. Welcome. Um, I, uh, um, great discussions that were had. I know it's hearing some that Leroy was sharing and, and about that broker thing. That was awesome. Uh, sometimes I get people that say, oh, I have to call my team later. I actually get calls from you guys, <laughs> right? I can get a hold of Simon and they'll be in the appointment. So, um, I'm happy to be able to help that. That's awesome. So let's go next. Oh, next, okay. Chris. Kim, yes. Why don't you come on up? Oh, Brandy. Okay. Brandy said an awful lot of what we have. Touched yeah. upon, particularly the legal issue that people might not understand, and the fact that people who are not in the business but have a best friend somewhere who talked about it or whatever, they think that you just show up and you sell the house. So you put a sign out, and they don't realize that there's like 50 things that you could be doing a day to find a home, to sell a home. And so we talked about, we talked about, um, you know, the skill set behind it, sort of like what. Brandy mm -hmm. did that if you talk to a person you say hey listen we understand that this is what you think is you don't think that we're really worth this but <clears throat> one two three professional <laughs> you know, all of these things are what we do and that's why we're worth the three percent or the six percent or whatever um Mike touched upon the legal the legality behind it and how that kind of takes some of the onus away from you if something goes south that we have coverage um we talked about so exclusivity of our skills because if you are talking to someone who wants a one percent then that means if you're doing three people who do one person who are offering you one percent you have to work with three different people before you're going to get what you would have gotten originally so you're spread out more because we're not going to stop working and trying to make the same amount of money as yeah. we did, we're not just going to be like, oh, okay, we'll take that 1% and then go, we'll take that 1% if we have to, and then take another one and take another one. So they really lose out on our, the exclusivity of our work. Mm -hmm. um, that was great. And that's about it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Good job, Pam. Pink team. That's me. And Don't me. me. Yeah. All right. So great group and some fantastic ideas. And basically, you're defending our value proposition. You know, this is our value. And, uh, you know, one of the things that was, that was brought up is that basically uh, this is, we have to come back to that comment when it comes from our client and say, oh, you know, it's defending this. And so you say, oh, well, that's a great comment. You know, what brought that up? Find out where the client's head is before you respond. Get them talking about it and explain it a little bit further because it could be something small or it could be something big. You don't need to defend the world if you're only defending something that's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is brought up is that at basically we can defend that at six percent, we can give you provide all these services. We're not going to just you know provide the minimum. We're going to provide everything, mm -hmm. and then ask the client, hey, you know, if you want a discount, what would you remove from that? You know, which one of these services are you willing to check out the window and and see where that is? Um, and the other thing is uh, you went into that you are paying for the expertise of selling a home beyond expertise, experience in the market, you know, connections in the community mm -hmm. and knowledge. Um, uh, you're also willing. Oh, wait. Oh, and this is the other thing. If you're willing to pay a reduced commission from a, that another agent uh, provides to you, but are you willing to accept the reduced service, possibly a reduced listing price? Um, and is that agent really going to be able to negotiate for you when it comes down to the wire? Are they going to willing to step up and do that hard negotiation? And then do you really want your client to out negotiate you if they, you know, if you get out and negotiate by your client, what does that prove that exactly. you're going to be out, out negotiated out in the real world, but you know, with the other agents? Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that that you had said was uh, you provide a commission breakdown, and yes. it comes. Oh yeah, young new real estate capital. 
Yeah. Yeah. Allison teaches that. Yeah. Allison like, okay, yeah. yeah. talks. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like provide them a commission for it. Yeah. Provide them a chart and just say, yeah, this commission belongs to my broker. And the broker gets this chunk. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I pay E and O, I pay taxes, taxes, I pay staging, I pay marketing, I pay risk management. Yes. And um, that's basically what we have. Did I forget anything? What do you think? Oh, that was oh, awesome. Okay. You uh, if you are, if a security sells this one, ask that seller, are you prepared to go to work for, oh, for, for the less off. money? Made himself, but are you still here? Yeah, yeah, no, that was great. You guys, thank you so much for sharing. Um, the last one that I was going to add in there that you guys kind of touched with is that commission breakdown. I was just at the speaker for Women's Council over the weekend, and uh, her name was Alexis Bolin, and she uh was two time realtor of the NAR Realtor of the Year. She sold 6,000 homes. 6,000. Yes. Very awesome lady. And she does that exact thing, Catherine. She has a sheet in her listing presentation where she does provide a listing breakdown of where the commission actually goes. And in this article, and that's one of the things I took was that the guy wrote in here $26,250 that his buyer's agent made. And that's the reality of what they think we make not 30% to taxes or 20% to taxes, right? Not your commission split to your broker, not your you know, insurance. So I think that was a really good point. Um, the second one that you guys didn't say that um, I heard a lot, which Alexis had said uh, in the thing as well, was she had said, um, because you know people will come up and will say, oh, well, Joe Schmo down the street will take my listing at 1%, right? Her uh, combat back to this, which I thought was gold, which is, that's great. Why didn't you hire Joe Schmo? Why didn't you hire him? Right? Let the client tell you why they didn't hire them. There's a reason that they're asking you that. They can find any discount broker around the street, but there's a reason they didn't sign the listing agreement with Joe Schmo already. So think about it from that perspective. Let them defame your competition. Don't talk ill of them. Lift yourself up. We're realtors. Lift yourself up, provide that value. Make sure you articulate it to your clients when you're sitting there at the table, especially buyer's agents right now. We know that change with the disclosures happening. So now they are gonna know every penny that we make in this transaction. So no more can you guys say, oh, don't worry, you don't pay me. Because in theory, you're getting paid from the transaction, right? I've heard people say that to buyer's agents all the time. Oh, don't worry, or to buyers. Oh, don't worry, you don't pay me. The listing agent pays me. Oh, don't worry, right? It's all a part of the transaction. Okay, thank you guys so much. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Great. Anything else on the chat? Let me oops, scroll down. There we go. I love that Joe Schmo. Yeah, <laughs> he's a great realtor. Okay, moving on quickly. Um, oops, need to let the chat. Okay, great. Does anyone have any listing pitches buyer needs right now? Yeah, um, Kim. I have a, I have a buyer need that I think is probably not going to happen, but duplex Long Beach, seven hundred or less. Okay, that's it. You never know with this market. Yep, I have. It will be on the market for a couple of weeks yet. I have a lease listing in the beautiful community of Roswell. Yeah, it is a four bedroom, two bath, indoor laundry with painting, new carpet, and dealing with the landscape. Um, going to be around about sixty five hundred a month. Mm-hmm. But um, let me know. We're just doing some work on that. People want that school district, though. Yep. 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 Anyone else here? Listing pitches. Okay, what about what we need? We need it. I need it. Yeah, what did you? Yeah, go ahead. uh, Uh, What price point? Um, I would say 600. Okay, or less. There was one built in like 1918, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it'd be remodeling and everything, and it's a four bedroom, three bath. Yeah, and it is only 40. Oh, 550,000. It's out there. Okay, great. I'm sure it's gone now because they have it open now. So I'm going to show here and pitch some of these listings for those agents that are not here. Um, 
Allison Van Wig has a new listing on Rose Street in Bellflower, four bedroom, two bath, 670 list price. That looks like a nice yard. Allison's got another listing. It just came live on Josie. It's a corner unit, three bedroom, two bath. Uh, that's at 895, right? Huh? It's gonna go fast. Yeah, it's gonna go fast. I know we have people calling on it this morning. Kendra Miller, one point, almost oh, one point five, one point four nine five. Um, that's in Havana. Uh, two bed, two bath, three bed, three bed. Sorry, uh, two bath. Of course, Richard. I don't think Rich, Richard's in here. Um, Richard has a, a property in Almond Ave. It's two bed, one bath. It's a condo though, right? I'm pretty sure it's a condo. Yeah. It's a oh, or it's a rental. I'm sorry. Um, we've got the Shannon Jones team, another listing, Freeman Ave in Long Beach, two bed, two bath, 750. We've got Elaine, <laughs> Cindy, you want to pitch this one? Well, some of you might recognize this property. Yeah. Um, it's Elaine's property. Um, it's a Killingsworth um, case study number 25, I believe. Yeah. Um, it it's is. The first that it's drawn in that, though. I think it's like not. It's 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 like twenty three forty. It's it's not, it's not thirteen forty. Yeah, the square footage. Is at any rate, it's way beautiful. Yes, it is. Take a look at it. It's at any rate, it's beautiful. And um, just write in, negotiate that your buyer has to have a holiday party there so we can watch the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tina, congrats in Ontario. She's got another listing, 525. If you guys want to get out of the city or have clients that are getting out there, uh, Pat has a new listing on Lewis, two bed, one bath at 550. Huh? That satisfies her needs. Right? Yeah, there you go, Teresa. <laughs> two bed, one bath, 550. Oh, no, oh yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's bring up our affiliate partner. Oh, and you guys come on up here. Come on up here. Good morning. Interest rates. Friday was the jobs report. It came out a little bit stronger than the forecast. So that hurt rates a little bit, but luckily the market had already kind of built that in. And so it didn't really hurt us as bad as we were expecting. Interest rates are still in the mid to high sixes uh, for conventional. And then uh, low sixes hovering right around six actually for FHA. Um, these days with interest rates being higher, I'm seeing a lot of my clients uh, when they're trying to shoot for a specific sale price that they're looking for for their needs, most of them are finding a lot more benefits in going with FHA just because right now it gives us uh, a little bit more debt to income ratio room in comparison to the conventionals. Now they can still refi down the road. It's just a, definitely a good option to consider these days. Um, and then also a uh, reminder every single Wednesday at 11 a.m. We have the script practice and role play. I really like these little breakout sessions that we're doing in here. Um, and when we were talking about what we would say in response uh, to someone asking the discount or commission, um, it was, you know, just kind of a, a nice reminder that we should all be practicing this on a very regular basis. And I know I've, a lot of you have been there. It's really fun. Um, it's hosted by Alex Skur, the other lender in here, and myself. So um, we'd love to see you guys Wednesdays at 11. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Uh, okay, so um, good news. Well, we're bad news, depending on headlines, right? <laughs> um, oh, we learned that. Today. Home, yeah, we learned that about like, 45 minutes ago. So, home price growth falls to 12%. <laughs> Damn. So, <laughs> at the average sale price in Orange Club, Mango County, they're only going to make 120000 in equity this year. Oh, so, so sad. Uh, I did a class yesterday on absentees. It is recorded. If anyone wants to do it, but basically, we've dialed it in where we've done all the postcards up front, they just drop your name and your logo in. Then there's a follow up with the cell phone numbers. Then there's a follow up with emails. All you need to do is give us a zip code. That makes it very simple. You want to save your sellers money when they start grinding you? Use Orange Coast. We're the only title company. There's two, pardon me. Of the 31, there are two title companies that have discounts. We're one of them 15% for veterans, 15% or if you're over 55, which is unbelievably young. <laughs> I can't believe that's the number for senior. And also, 
first responders. Um, and again, uh, the last thing we are getting, and I think it's because now that all the tax bills are out, right? And all those people who paid 250000 more for their house are now looking at their tax bill. Yeah. <laughs> so Prop 19, I'm getting 100 calls about this, guys. They have two years. So if they didn't do it originally and they bought the last you know, 18 months, we can still get that handled. So remember that. And also on our app, there's a calculator. So it's really simple. You put what they sold for, what they bought for, and it'll tell them, they'll do all the prorations and it'll do all that. Martin and I and Darian are here. Give us a call. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Just to piggyback, I actually have a buyer. She bought in escrow with us last December. She refinanced at the beginning of the year. She just got her supplemental bill and she's selling her property. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, she was like, I think I went through a midlife crisis. These tax bills are insane, California is expensive. <laughs> and she's moving back to Montana. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It hasn't even been a year. I'm like, well, Franchise Tax Board comes in. Right? So keep that in mind. But Tax bills are out. It's the number one question we're getting right now from sellers. Do I pay the tax bill? If you're in escrow, about to be in escrow, don't pay it unless it becomes delinquent. But even then, I mean, it's better to pay the penalty than have to hold and wait until those payments are posted. So if you do have clients, again, that have bought in the last couple months, just make sure that they know the taxes are due because the county doesn't catch up to make sure that that new homeowner gets the bill. You know, they want to make sure they'll send like a duplicate copy. It'll say duplicate copy on it. It's in the seller's name. So they think, oh, I don't have to pay this. But really, we didn't pay it. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just even when you get it in the mail, it it'll say the seller's yeah, name on it. it. You'll get it in the mail. Name. Yeah. And yeah. then they just throw it away. But really, that's their copy of the bill to pay first and second installment, which isn't due till next year. So it's a good touch to your buyers who have purchased. A good way to reach out, like, oh, you're getting ready for the holidays, make sure you pay your tax bill. Mm -hmm. You know, unless they got impound, then the lender will pay that bill for them. But then make sure to remind them supplemental tax bill, you have to pay those. So, like that buyer I told you about, she had $7,500 in supplemental tax bills. Like it had her interest, her, you know, tax bill completely skyrocketed. And she didn't know to pay those. So she had to actually pay a couple penalties because she got two different bills. And feel free to have them call us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, have these yeah. conversations every day. You probably go. So yeah. we can punch up the whole history. It'll all pop up credits, debits, how they get <laughs> there, how the supplemental bill was tabulated. Yeah. It, it really is for them. Yeah. And that's just what the time we're in right now. It's a good contact. But then you can always, yeah, like Kevin said, refer it to us, refer it to title, and we can go over it with them. But. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for the coastline. Great. So let's take a look at what's on the calendar. Simon said uh, today's staging and preparing the home is happening from two to three. Um, and then offer presentation best practices. We're going to need to brush up on that skill that's happening October 18th. So next week. Um, so the monthly mentee meeting is happening today. If you guys are in the mentor program and you have a mentor, uh, make sure mentees you show up today at one. We're going to have a great discussion uh, to help you guys move forward. Uh, SoCal meeting happening today. Many, you want to say anything about it? Uh, 1 p.m. Um, Jared, he is the, uh, basically the uh, director or leader of the Amute family in that division nationwide. So you just you know, jump on the call. We're going to have a conversation about what uh, he's doing, they're doing. Uh, if you want to, again, learn more, yeah, you don't have to be a commercial agent to join our calls. But it's uh, uh, bi weekly calls. Today at 1 o'clock. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Benny. Uh, family bowling. Again, you guys, make sure you join us on Friday. Sign up at the front desk. It's at no cost to you uh, because we have wonderful, generous people that are helping support this. Make sure you guys come. Cowball, 6 to 8 p.m. in Lakewood. That's happening. And Penny and Damian won last year. So quite the quite the little bowl. And a real quick note for all of the KW agents that are bowling that night, every strike that is bowled by you. Many is making a five dollar donation to KW. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Come ball your strike. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 
Last time, because uh, of Penny and Damien, and he had to really whip out his wallet. So <laughs> she's not coming this time. <laughs> oh yes, he is. He's been yes, flexing her ribs for the last right. week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, great. So, uh, real estate horror stories. If you guys haven't seen Laura talk about the RERM uh, horror stories, you would be surprised and shocked about the things that happen in the legalities in real estate. Um, so, make sure you guys join that. Um, she's going to be here in person, right? Monday morning. In yes. the morning. Yeah, Monday next morning week. 10 Monday morning at 10 a.m., right? It's a good one and a good thing to put on social media for, as well to talk about with your clients. What's the hype? Jason's talking about the 2023 business plan destination. Uh, make sure you join Jason for that. A day in the life of a team. This is going to be a wonderful session. You've got your top teams that are joining as well as buyers agents. If you're considering joining a team or if you're considering growing a team or if you have a team and you want to make it a better team, this class is for you. Okay, they're going to share all of their tips and tricks of what it takes to be a top producing team and leave a wonderful legacy. Uh, Saturday series open houses with Drake. We talked about that is happening 1022 open houses, conversations with sellers, pricing conversations. This is with Shannon. This is on the calendar as well. And uh, our Halloween celebration. Don't forget October 25th. It's costume day. We're going to be our door decorating contest day. And of course, our chili cook-offs. It's going to be very festive. Do not miss that meeting. So we're going to have a real hoot of a time. Okay. Uh, script and role play. Thanks to Mike and Alex, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is a great video and energy. <laughs> uh, everyone has a great time. Of course, uh, our regular sessions. This is planning clinic that's happening October 27th from one to three. It's going to be a great time where you're going to get everything you need in order to be able to assess and move forward in your business in a purposeful way. And I think we all need that. Command Con, many of you guys have registered for this. Don't miss out. We will have it live on in the bullpen as well. So if you guys want to partake in person with some command experts here that will walk around and help you guys set up things like uh, Facebook advertisement, import leads, et cetera. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me. Okay. Thank you everyone on